Thor News presents Comet C-2012 S-1 Ison and WTF NASA. Seriously, bro. This is part 11. Five things you need to know. Asterisk. As I've been saying for 11 episodes now, Comet Ison could be very special. Yeah, it's true. Comet Ison could be so magical, it is an object that is fascinating to both scientists and Christians. Neither side will be able to deny its glory. But, as I said in the last episode, hey, it could be a dud. Asterisk. Or, as I said in the episode before that, hey, it could be wormwood. Now, if you ask science, what are asteroids? They say, basically, they're giant floating rocks in space. And then if you say, okay, hey, what are comets? Science says, oh, those are dirty snowballs. Okay, they always look like a giant flaming dragon head, but its makeup is just like a dirty snowball. You know how, like, when you throw a snowball and it bursts into flames and stays in flames in flight without burning out? Something just like that. Dirty snowball. Jumbo shrimp, I'm gonna jumbo shrimp on your cake. And on a religious side, great comets are signs from the heavens. And I do believe we are supposed to be looking for them and trying to understand them. But I am excited, we have reached halfway through 2013, the year of the comet, and Comet Ison should be at its peak around December, Christmas Day. So we're halfway there. At the halfway point, we now have our first TPTB MSM story on Comet Ison from CNN International. Five things you need to know, and let me tell you what. That excites Thor. I would like to know those five things. Oh, dang, I already know them. But hey, let's break down those five points. Ready? Here goes Thor's magical five point brigity breakdown. Brigity breakdown. Five things you need to know. Go. Brigity breakdown. Okay, question one. What's with the funky name? Wow, that's a horrible question. That's probably the stupidest question you could have thought of for the very first question. I would have started with, what makes this comet so special? Okay, so it's a giant magic comet that'll be right over the North Pole Christmas Day. The Thor is excited. And you start off with its funky name. Okay, great. MSM, you never fail to disappoint. I think I shall now call you CNN and the Stinky Butt Funky Bunch. What's with the funky name? Common Ison was discovered by Russian astronomers Vitaly Nevsky and Artyom Novknok in September 2012. It's named after their night sky survey program, the International Scientific Optical Network, a group of observatories in 10 countries organized to track objects in space. Well, as I mentioned in my previous video, A, I guess they didn't like the last names Nevsky and Nobody, which to me are fine. Should have just flipped the coin and named it Vitaly or Artyom. I mean, Artyom would have been a good name. Vitaly too. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Question two, how big is it? That's what she said. Let me tell you how big it is. Measurements taken by the Hubble Space Telescope in April indicate that Ison has a nucleus that is three to four miles across. Comet's head, or coma, is estimated to be 3,100 miles across, or 1.2 miles the width of Australia. The Hubble team says its dust tail extends more than 57,000 miles, more than twice the circumference of Earth and far beyond the telescope's field of view. You got too much dust in your tail, baby? You need me to smack it out of there for you? Shake, 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 shake it. And this question would have been my number two question. So at least they got number two right. So good job, CNN. Failed on one, do a good job on the second. My third question was, if it's the average size comet with an average known makeup, what makes it so special as to be the comet of the century. And I've been asking this question since March 27th publicly, and no one has answered, no one. We've got a giant dung pile, weird ass answers for why we've only gotten one Hubble photograph of this, and why NASA refuses to put a motion picture camera on it. I've got a lot of them. None of them make any sense, really. So I feel that my question still stands, except now it, why won't you put a motion picture camera on it? And you can't rule out the fact that it might be wormwood. You guys made it sound like Wormwood, dude. The double dust and crap. Yeah, I think comets seed planets. If you want to explain how the Earth went from being a garden that produced giant dinosaurs to being a garden that produced human beings, maybe comets have a part in the seeding process of the things that change basic makeup itself of the planet. So all that microbial dust, microbial seeds, you know, who knows? So NASA's being friggin' weird. And it's like if you're a Christian and you believe in the Bible, it says Wormwood's coming. That means you should uh, get to know what Wormwood is. Obviously, if God wanted to mention it, probably important. And due to free will, 
we all have an effect on what happens in our future. Maybe not after we die, but while we're here, we all have an effect on our future. Okay, it's a comment. Aren't there a lot of comments? Why is this one special? Which is my question number one. Okay, you guys reverse the order even though your first question was a throwaway. Okay, it's a comment. Aren't there a lot of comments? Why is this one so special? Okay, aren't there a lot of comments? Why is this one so special? Some early comment prognosticators have tagged Ison the comment of the century. Wait, wait, let me take a moment to remind you all of the earliest comet Ison prognosticators were NASA, the ESA, and all of official science. So, back to the story at hand. Comet Ison has the potential to be among the brightest comets of the last 50 years. See, now the estimates have become way more conservative. Before it was, could be the brightest comet in the last thousand years. Bodwitz and other astronomers used Swift's Bodwitz. Oh, you want a Bodwitz? And other astronomers used NASA's Swift satellite to estimate Ison's water and dust production. Yeah, it's going to double dust us. How to tell space rocks apart. Man, that's a weird sentence. Kama Ison is a sun grazer. Carl Batans of the Naval Research Lab said in a NASA article. Kama Ison is a sun grazer. Carl Batans of the Naval Research Lab said in a NASA article. The orbit of the comet will bring it very close to the sun, which we know can be a spectacular thing. Sorry, that, that voice may not be a proper representation of Carl. Never met the dude. Hey, but before you get too excited, other experts caution, it's too early to know what Ison will do. Too late, guys. When scientists initially said that it could be 15 times brighter than the full moon, I got excited. And then when you guys told me that it was going to double dust Earth two ways to Sunday, doom on, switch flipped. At least a little. You got to be prepared. That's what the Boy Scouts say, man. Sun grazer. Predicting the behavior of comets is like predicting the behavior of cats. Can't really be done. I predict the cats will take a nap, lick themselves, eat, take a poop, purr and meow. Did I do it right? Okay, great. Welcome to the comet of the year, we hope. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to the party, pal. I was here March 27th, and I've been showing up for Astonishers Comet Ice meetings pretty much once a week since then. Well, welcome to the party, pals. Good to have you on board. Um, crap. I need to make a video about the Astonishers to explain it all. Dang it. Astonishers Unite. God bless everybody. I think it's going to be awesome. Okay, so it's a giant magic comet. It'll be right over the North Pole Christmas Day. The Thor is excited. Wow, yeah, I got so excited. I spoke a bit too long about only two questions that CNN was asking. Like, I would just jumped at the chance to jibba-jabba on about Comet Ison. Wrap this one up real quick. Give you the five things you need to know about Comet Ison from the Thor News Network. One, it has the potential to be the comet of the century. Two, it looks like a dragon. Three, it acts like a cat. Four, we don't know where it came from. We don't know where it's going. We don't know what it's made of. But we do believe it is headed for a close rendezvous with the sun. Five, ladies, I'm single. I'm a bit of a hermit, though. It's hard to get me out of the back cave. God bless everyone. In November, Ison is expected to fly to the sun's atmosphere at about 700,000 miles above the surface. If it survives the sun's heat, experts say it might glow as brightly as the moon and be briefly visible in daylight. Its tail might stretch far across the night sky. <laughs> right? Yeah, whoa. You guys need a... Okay. Jumbo shrimp? I'm gonna jumbo shrimp on your cake. 